everyone. Hey, welcome to Vortex Garage. And today we're gonna to do something just a little bit different because we're gonna talk about some dog stuff. Specifically, we're gonna do a little review of the Phi collar here. This is a GPS tracker collar. Of course, we might have a few distractions during this video because, well, we got some buddies who like to, like to play ball. I'll try to not throw that right into the tripod here. So as you might be able to tell, they've actually been outside playing and got a little bit muddy. So we're in here hanging out. Um, but uh, one of the things that's kind of awkward about this video as we get started here is this is now the fourth time I've tried to do it. Uh, the first time was after work and I was sort of all over the place. It was a long day and I shouldn't have even tried. The second time I did two attempts with what turned out to be a faulty SD card and the videos were corrupted. Uh, oddly, I hadn't had a memory card fail in quite a long time. So hey, if you're watching this and you've got pictures you haven't backed up or videos on an SD card somewhere, go back them up, pause this video and come back. Good reminder to do that. Um, very rare, I haven't had one fail in a long time. But And then the second one, I went ahead and filmed it and the memory card I put in, I didn't check and it filled up after halfway through and I left the camera on manual focus like an idiot. So <laughs> I don't even know why I'm doing this, but we're gonna try, this one should be it. We're gonna get it right, buddy, and we're gonna share some thoughts. Now, as you might know, if you've been here, I have a tendency to talk a lot and go on tangents. So I even printed out some bullet points so to keep me on track and talk about this, and that's what we're gonna do. So I borrowed Sharky's Phi Collar. Gwen's got one as well, and we're gonna talk a little bit about these. So according to my bullet points, we're gonna start with a little bit of an intro here. Like I said, no one minds dog distractions, so we'll pause to throw the ball as we need to. Um, so basically, this is, I think, a really great uh, GPS and step counter collar. Um, it's got a lot of pluses and pros does have a couple of cons that we're going to get into, one major one that we'll get into. But even with that, um, I, A, I think that can be tweaked in the next generation of them. This is a first-gen product. Um, but I still like it enough that I bought Gwen's even knowing some of the cons. So um, real quick, let's get into uh, price. Then I'll tell you why I bought these collars, and then we'll get into that con first, and then we'll talk about some of the pros. So uh, if you want to skip around, that's kind of what our format will be today. So price. Uh, again, this is a GPS collar, which does mean, and all GPS collars are like this, they have to use a cellular signal to have uh, GPS and send that data when they're not on your Wi-Fi. So you've got a, a subscription to consider, um, but they all have that, so that's not unique to Fi. Uh, so the cost, $149 for the main unit, and there are often coupon codes for that. I think right now there's a $15 off for a new user. Um, when I bought Gwen's, it was around the holidays, they had a massive 50% off sale on them, which was awesome. So I got hers for 75 bucks. So it's 149, but always look for coupon codes or sales, whatnot, they're, they're, up, they're out there. So what do you get? You get the Phi unit, you get the collar, your choice of yellow, which Sharky has, or gray, which Gwen has. Uh, and you get the base unit, which is your charger as well, which this slips on and uses kind of like a magnetic interface. Oh, Gwen wants to play. Oh, he caught it off camera, of course. Um, and uh, you also get a cord, USB cord, and a USB adapter to plug it in. Uh, the additional collars you can buy, they're $29 each. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as we get deeper into the review. Ooh, I came close to him hitting the tripod there. He's, he's slick, though. He went right around it. So let's talk about that GPS subscription. So uh, the cost for that, one year, $99. So it's less than $10 a month. Now, if you buy years in advance, you can get a little, little bit of a discount. So two years is 186. Three years is 248. That's kind of your best deal. If you buy three years up, up front, you'll save $52 over the three years. Now, why do you need a subscription? And well, quite honestly, you don't 100% need it. But to me, the whole reason of buying one of these is to have the GPS tracking away from home and to get a, mitigate having a lost dog. So the GPS is necessary for that. If you don't have that subscription, you can still use the collar locally with, over Bluetooth and get some step counter stuff, but very limited functionality. You lose a lot of the uh, good stuff when you don't have the subscription. So budget that in. You, you need to get that. Um, the... the Technology it uses and why you need that. Let's talk about that. So this uses LTE-M, which I wrote out here on my bullets, is actually, uh, it's an AT&T LTE-MTC, technically, which is machine type communication. Now, if you've heard LTE, which you probably have on your normal cell phone and smartphone, 
LTE-M is a low power version of LTE that's designed for Internet of Things devices, small devices with small need communication needs. It's really great because it saves battery life, which is one of the big pluses we're going to talk about with the Fi. So what do you need that for? I mean, it's, do I have a GPS chip? What do I need cellular for if I'm getting GPS? GPS, you know, I can have a handheld unit. I don't need a contract for that. Well, remember, this works where the dog is away from you. If the dog isn't near your phone or it's not near your Wi-Fi, the collar gets that GPS information, and then it needs to transmit that to back to the Fi app, uh, to the Fi servers, down to the Fi app on your phone. So you need some way to transmit that data. And you can't just have a wireless signal that does that directly because it would have very limited range. You really need that. And it also uses a triangulation from the towers to help uh, you know, say the dogs in the woods or something like that where GPS signal could be compromised, you've still got the backup location data from the towers, which is valuable. So that's why these have that capability. Um, so when you're looking at it going, why do I got to pay extra for the subscription? I don't understand that. Why can't it have a radio on it? Now, it, it's, if your dog gets away and runs off and gets a couple miles away from you or even half a mile, or it's in the deep woods and not getting good GPS signal, you're still going to get location data transmitted to the app on a live basis. That's why you need the LTEM. Hey, buddy. All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about the overall details here. Make sure we covered all that. I've got my bullet points helping me stay on track. So as I mentioned, this is a tracker collar with GPS, but it, it also has a companion app, which we'll talk about a little more, which gives you step tracking and really cool stuff like that. Um, it has an integrated light that can change various colors, uh, and it does have the app, which we'll talk a little bit more, which but it gives you step trapping, tracking, mapping features, um, lets you track walks, sends SMS or push notifications for certain things. You can have safe zones, et cetera. We'll, we'll cover those later. So let me talk about my experiences of why I bought one of these and why I ended up getting a second one, actually, because I liked it so much. Um, but specifically, we'll get into, uh, well, let's go back to Gwen in the first place before, before this Sharky, who's Sharky's now one year, eight months. Gwen is coming up on 10 years. Uh, so we got Gwen a couple years ago as a rescue. She's a lab mix. Uh, we ended up doing the DNA tests on her, which was fun. Um, we'll talk about that another time maybe. Um, but she is half lab, and she the other half is uh, boxer, miniature schnauzer, and a little bit of Great Dane, and then a few other things kind of mixed in there. And uh, one thing I learned with Gwen, very well-trained, very calm, easygoing dog, and uh, and seem to have good recall, right, Gwen? So I always liked with my dogs to be able to have them on the property roaming around and, and out with you, not on a leash all the time. So I didn't know her history too well, so I started, you know, trying out, and we, we did some off-leash training, had long leads in case anything, you know, she ran off, and she was doing really good, had decent recall. But what I learned about Gwen is when she gets on a tra track of something or sees something she wants to go after or sniff, she gets an incredible focus drive and her recall goes out the freaking window. And this happened one time where she was exhibiting off leash really well. I got to the point where the leads were getting smaller and I tried just no lead, just a collar. And she was doing great. And I thought, this is cool. This is no problem, no sweat. She's had no issues. I'm gonna have a nice off leash dog, easy. She saw something she wanted to go after and took off. And She's quick, all right? She can keep up with this one if she wants to. She's got some speed. I could not catch her, and I ended up running after her for a half a mile, and she started running really close to the main road, and, and I was really freaking out she was going to run out into the road or something like that. She finally just gave up, decided she was done, came back and walked right back over to me and followed me back. I put the leash on her, and uh, <laughs> that was enough to spook me. I was like, hey, I got to do something here. If we're going to keep doing this, I'm... I'm I'm not, I'm not the biggest runner in the world. I, I think I run fast, but after running top speed for a half a mile, I was like, uh, yeah, I'm not really a marathon runner. I can't do that for hours. So I decided to get a GPS tracker collar from another company and give that a try on Gwen. And I didn't have the greatest experience with it. We won't really go into that. Um, I mean, I will. I'll mention it. Um, I'm not here to bash them, but I got a Link AKC. And I just felt like it was good, and I don't dislike it necessarily, but it just wasn't. 100% where it needed to be. Uh, the battery life wasn't the best. Um, it was like a pop-out unit that was cool that you could mount it on any collar, um, but it, it was like a rigid curved unit that didn't really fit well on every dog. Um, and it, it didn't always pick signal up super quick outside, and, I, and I, that kind of bothered me a bit. 
And it just felt like I didn't, the experience was at the point where I didn't want to use it all the time. It was kind of an afterthought, sometimes taking her out, and it just sort of wasn't getting the use it needed. Ooh, that was another one close. So when I saw the Phi come out, when we got Sharky, I knew as a young lab, we were going on a trip and taking him. I was like, man, I'm, I'm really nervous. What if I have the same situation happen? And, and he's young and, and he's a, I want to track him, you know, if something happens. So I saw the ads for Phi. It looked like a different unit. And I said, I'm going to try out the Phi unit and see how that compares. And I ended up liking it so much. That's when we bought the second one for Gwen, even after the con that we had. So that's kind of my experience that I've had with it. So let's talk about, whoop, as if they want to play under me here, let's talk about the con first. Before we get into the pros, I think it's important to talk about the cons and get those out. And I'll explain why, even after having this con happen, I still bought Gwen's thing and the scenario usage of this, I think, changed. So that factors in the one major thing. One day, I, well, let's get into it succinctly. The Phi unit here, if you look at the collar, it's pretty elegant. You can see as a first-gen design why they did this. It's integrated into the collar. And that's great. It's aesthetically nice. It keeps the bulk down. It's a nice small unit. It fits almost any dog. It's really, really nice how they did that. But there's two problems with that. Number one, you're stuck using the collar that Phi gives you or buying another one for 29 bucks. You can't just put this on any collar. Uh, the second thing that's a problem is that although this collar is really nice, it's nice thick nylon, it's got a metal clasp, it seems really well built, the, the phi becomes a structural piece of the collar. And the phi is made of plastic. And specifically these end pieces where these pivoting rings go, the plastic is, as you'd expect, not super thick. And to me, that's a problem because that makes a real weak zone, as you might even be able to spot on this collar, and the problem that we had. Uh, using this as a primary collar, I do not recommend. I was actually doing that with Sharky because I got so happy using it and it was working well. And, and he had pulled on it a couple times and it had no problems. It's not necessarily weak. But if you've got a big high drive dog, a big monster of a pup, or even a smaller dog, think about physics for a second, all right? We're not going to do equations here, but you know, everyone likes those retractable leashes. Let's say you got a 30 foot retractable lead and you don't stop it when the dog starts running. You get a smaller dog charging away. Well, now you've got the velocity that that dog gets going. It's inertia mixed in with the mass of the dog. Do some calculations, and all of a sudden, that little dog's got some, some power at the end of that 30-foot lead. Well, that might be enough to break this collar. And that's what happened with Sharky. He actually was out walking, got something that, that kicked his drive up as a young pup, and he pulled to the end of his lead. Uh, and I, I stopped it early, but still, he's such a big monster of a pup. He had a lot of power and it was enough to snap the end of this. And basically, he kept going, the collar was sitting on the ground and then in my hand. So let's say I got really lucky, Sharky was already doing well on his leash training, his recall's pretty decent. So he stopped and he came back and he walked back with me to the house and we put his other collar on and went back and walked again. But he did break the thigh, he broke the end of it. And as a result, if he had taken off, he wouldn't have had the tracker. The whole reason of having this would no longer be attached to him. So a couple thoughts about that. Number one, I uh, did not call Phi and, and tell them about this. So I'm sure if I did, they would have replaced it under warranty. They would have probably been happy to do that. I did not even give them that opportunity. So this isn't to say that the fact that it's fixed here is because they wouldn't replace it. I didn't even ask them to. That's my nature. I'm just, I looked at it. I thought about what to do. And I said, you know what? I, like, I just like fixing things. So what I did is I, I put it back together and I epoxied it uh, with some plastic weld epoxy, high strength, high PSI, and it's back to normal. It's, it's, it's strong. It works perfectly. It charges. It, no harm, no foul. Um, but one of the reasons I'm comfortable with that is I've realized that I need to adjust my thinking of how I utilize a GPS collar, not just buy any GPS collar. And the thing is, think about it. What are the scenarios that a dog gets lost? Well, you can have a dog outside that sneaks out of its place, wanders off, you know, gets out of the car, um, jumps a fence, things like that. So yeah, if you have the collar on them, you'll be able to track them. That's great. But think about all the times that you've heard of people walking their dogs and they have a collar fail or a, a dog slips out of a collar. Um, so Gwen did that one time. She slipped out of her collar. She's got a little bit of a small head. She backed out of it. She really wanted to go and say hi to somebody and she snuck herself right out of her collar. Um, and it was properly tensioned too. Um, Sharky one time, I didn't have his harness uh, tight enough and he actually backed out of his harness one time. He uh, didn't want to get out of the car, believe it or not. He loves riding in the car. 
And uh, I went to, to grab him, the, to pick him up, and he just went boop and squeaked right out of his harness. It was quite hilarious. Um, and think about this. A lot of people buy collars with plastic glass, even these metal ones. You know, you got a big, powerful dog. It could break. So, you know, a, a big time scenario for a dog loss can involve the part attached to the leash breaking. And if that happens, if you have a GPS tracker attached to that, regardless of what brand, it's in your hand and the dog's gone. So what I've recognized is, is that it makes more sense to have your GPS tracker attached to your dog and no leash attached to it. <laughs> what you doing there, Glenn? So that way you're not risking breaking a collar, even a normal collar where you could attach the, the, the tracker to it or having the dog slip out of it. That, you know, if they slip out of the harness they're on or slip out of the, second, the main collar they're on, this is a secondary backup that's still attached to them when they run off. So that's why I repaired it and I'm happy to keep using it because I've now adopted or adapted, I, I mean, how I use them to where this is a secondary collar. I, I usually have the collar and a harness for walks or I'll even, he's a big dog, they have big necks. They can wear two collars pretty easily, no problem. So, so that's my, my warning and, and my advice. Um, so how could Phi fix this? And like I said, this is a generational pro first gen product. Um, I think their design made sense in what they were doing, but in real world use, feedback for them, which they're looking for, you know, they, could, they could fix this. So I think the best way to fix it would be to make the Phi unit attached to the collar a different way, not be an integral piece to the collar. Um, that would allow you also to solve another problem that if you look at their, their frequently asked questions, people ask, um, can I mount the Phi to my own collar? Um, some people might want to have their own collar for design or fashion or whatever. Being able to attach the Phi to it would be really nice. And it would also mean that the collar that comes with Phi would be nylon completely all the way with metal clasp being a nice strong collar the Phi is attached to. It might also al allow you to have a way to attach the Phi to a harness directly. Uh, but again, even if they do that, I still really recommend any track or any design, I think you should still think about failure methods or in ways things can fail. And it's not that the tracker would fail, that the dog could slip out of it. You, you want to have it just attached to it, not as a leashable point. So the other way Phi could solve this is make the backing metal. So that way there's metal here in this connection. And that might be uh, an engineering change. They'd have to figure out, maybe even look at, the, make sure it doesn't affect the signal. Anyone who had an old iPhone with a metal case when you put on it because they, you know, it was chrome cases that looked cool in the, the mid-2000s, uh, uh, they would cut back on some signal on older phones. So yeah, there might be some design work that has to be done there. But those are the ways they could fix this generationally. So if for some reason they watch this and are curious about my thoughts, that's where I'm at with this. And that's kind of some thoughts I have on what could make this a, a slightly better product. That said, I still like it so much, I bought another one for Gwen. All right. Let's take a look at our, our pros. All right, let's see what we got here. So we got some good pros. All right, so one of them, battery life. So Phi says on their website that you can expect on average, of course, with an asterisk, three months of battery life out of one of these. And I saw that and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Now, granted, that's mixed use, all right? That's not all on LTEM. That's a mix of outside on Wi-Fi in, in your home base. And that makes sense. So, because um, you gotta remember on LTE, even low power LTEM, you're gonna have a little less uh, a little more power draw. Tricked them. So, um, but in my experience, the battery life on this, I think does definitely live up to their expectations and claims. Um, when Sharkies did break, um, I didn't use it for a couple weeks because I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. And after that time, I, I wasn't charging it. And I fixed it and put it back on him. And even after sitting for three weeks and it wasn't fully charged when I took it off him in the first place, it was at 92% battery. Um, so, you know, considering going outside and walking and, and, you know, using the light and stuff like that, I think three month average is fair. Um, now what I do, I charge it every night, so I'm not really sure if I've never tested it. Um, what I do, I have the, the bases out, um, ready to go. So at night, take the collars off them. You just pop this on the base and it charges overnight. There, there are many days that I put it on, it doesn't even start charging. It's a, it never drops below 100%. So battery life is, is pretty awesome on these. Uh, tracking capability. I mentioned on the, the link that I had some issues where it didn't seem to want to pick signal up very good. And some really cheap GPS units that, that are out there would probably have similar issues. Um, the Phi seems like it has good tracking. I think the LTEM helps. And I think the, the GPS signal capabilities on it seem pretty good. So, I, um, you know, it's not perfect. There are certainly times where uh, its position isn't 100% accurate. But uh, what I found is if you go to the app and you click on the map, 
it'll it'll pull it, and once it pulls it, it'll it'll start pulling it in and, and get you a little tighter on the accuracy. So, all in all, I think it's it's really well. Going back to scenarios and and stuff, battery life and and tracking. You know, there are these sportsman level ones that are out there. They're like seven hundred dollar. You know really specific collars um, you know if you're hunting and your dog's roaming for miles and miles all day you might want something like that there's probably a scenario where that makes sense but honestly to me this thing tracks well enough and it, it also has waterproof which is another pro battery life's good this could probably handle most of that prefer most anyone that has a, a house dog just normal stuff it, it's it's really good it seems to work really well um, IP68 rating on it which I'll post in the annotation what that is Basically, it means it does have some waterproof. It's even salt waterproof. So you can go play at the beach. You can go let them go swimming. Um, there are limitations to IP68, but it's pretty good. And a lot of other trackers are lesser IP ratings in terms of their waterproof capabilities. Um, so let's see. Uh, the app itself. Um, so it does have some really good functions. Um, let's see. So it has the map function. It also tracks steps. And this is where I get to the point where I don't remember how much I talked about because I've done this four times. So hopefully this isn't repetitive, but one of the nice things about the app is tracking the steps and having the map is awesome. Um, but you, it has a, a function where you set up a profile of the dog and you put in its breed and you get rankings based on its breed and overall. And I didn't think that would be all that important or I would care much, but I found it's been kind of a fun, almost competitive motivator. Uh, like Gwen, for instance, right now, she's been working really hard and she's gotten herself up to the top 31% of the lab mixed breed. She's ranked 852 right now. And uh, she was originally in the uh, quite a bit lower than that. So she's, to me, it's been like, oh man, how high can I get on the rankings? It's helped me motivate to get her out to, to move more as an owner, to, to be more active and get them out and keep a track of that. So anything that does that as, as a dog owner, I think is helpful because, you know, dogs, they, they need to run, they need to stay active, they need to walk. And being able to track that and have the metrics is great, but having a little bit of an extra motivator is also exciting. Um, and Gwen in particular as an older dog. Um, I think we did talk about that she needs to drop a little bit of weight. Um, she's content sleeping all the time. She could use a, a little bit of weight loss. So it's been really good to kind of motivate to keep her going. Her steps are up. And I think that's helping up her weight loss goals. Uh, what else we got in here? Um, okay, we've got the safe zones, which I don't think we talked about. Uh, the safe zones, you can you have multiple of those, which is cool. So you can set them up at home. So you want to let your dog roam around with you. Um, if it leaves the safe zone, you'll get a push notification or an SMS text. So you can call the dog back. Um, you can set multiple ones up. So if you've got a vacation spot, another place you take them, maybe you're lucky enough to take your dog to work, you can have safe zones there as well. Um, you can have multiple owners, which is cool. So you can have multiple people that register the app to the dog. And uh, if anyone takes the dog for a walk, you got to have the phone with you, of course, for Bluetooth. But um, say the Sharky leaves the safe zone with me, a notification will go out that Sharky's with me but is on a walk. Um, but if the dog leaves the safe zone without somebody near them, you can get that notification. So either way, you know the dog left the safe zone but you know if it left with somebody or without somebody, which is really handy. Uh, there's a lost dog button on the app and there is some support you get from Fi, so that helps zero in. Uh, you know, it pulls it a little more so you get more accurate data. You know, uh, probably pulls some more battery drain, but it really helps you, you know, reel things in and, and have more accurate and you get support from Fi if you have a lost dog. I've never had to use it, I've never pressed it, um, but I know that it's there if we need to use it. Um, Let's see, I think that's pretty much it in terms of the app. Uh, let's see what else we got here for the pros. We talked about the waterproof. The, the small size, honestly, is really great. It is very lightweight. It fits all dogs. Um, cons, we talked about the, uh, how it fits on the collar. Um, we talked about that you can't move it to another collar, the structural concerns of it, but we talked about how I'm mitigating that and how it's turned out to not be that big a deal to me. A couple nitpicks, the light we talked about that you have, that you can change colors. It's kind of nice. You can you know, identify the different dogs, but the light itself isn't super bright. Um, so I don't know how useful it would be at long distances, but, but it's still nice, you know, nitpick. Um, the, other, the other nitpick that I have, you do have to charge it on the base. There's not a, there's not a USB port on it, but that probably helps with the waterproofing. Um, the base is lightweight if you need to take it somewhere. Quite honestly, if you go on a week's vacation somewhere, it just has enough battery life. If you've charged it up, you don't need to take the base with you. Um, 
So, you know, in all reality, that's not that big of a con. Um, and the base is really nice and it makes it easy. You don't have to plug something in or have a port go bad. You just slap this on onto the base and it charges. So in all reality, that's kind of not really a con. It's just a, how they designed it. So what that kind of brings me to is these pups are still getting their steps in and enjoying some playtime out here out of the mud, thankfully, uh, is that I really do like this collar. Uh, I think it's important to point out, if I haven't already mentioned it, that I bought this on my own. You know, Fi doesn't know I'm doing this review. They didn't ask me to do the review. They didn't pay for these devices. They didn't give me discounts on them. I use the same coupon codes you can use, and I liked it enough I bought a second one for Gwen. Um, so the review here is really my honest opinion, what I've seen, and uh, it's really to just give you an indication. You've seen this. You've been interested in it. Here's some real-world advice. My experience is I've had Sharkies for over a year now, and Gwen has had hers for about a month. Uh, and uh, Sharkies after a year has held up really well. There's some scratches on the aluminum case on, on the where the Phi is, but its usability is great. The battery life seems to still be as good as it was. Um, it seems to have held up really well, obviously, except for the obvious break that he did. We already covered that in detail, though. All right, so I think that's really about it. Um, like I said, I could probably ramble on plenty more, but that's really the big stuff. If you've got a question, I'll be happy to answer in the comments. If there's something that I didn't cover, you have questions on, I can answer that. Um, hopefully we weaved into the video here some nice pictures and video of these up close so you can check them out. And uh, other than that, if you've never been to our channel before and you've stumbled on us because of this video, if you're curious what we do, we've got other videos that feature car work. Uh, we do various car repair videos, but also some restorations, including our long-term, I say long-term jokingly because it's going to take me a while to do because it's a hobby as I get time, our, our uh, Triumph Spitfire restoration. Um, so check us out. Um, also, we are on Instagram because YouTube's kind of a hobby, uh, so I don't, I don't get my videos up super quick. But um, if you want to see what we're up to any given day, uh, Instagram at Vortex Garage is where you'll see everything. And that's going to be a mix of cars and tools and, and uh, dogs and stuff like that. All the things that I like at Vortex Garage on Instagram. Check us out. And uh, if you've been here before, thanks for checking us out. We will uh, be back with another video soon, back to some car stuff, maybe some tool reviews, things like that. So we'll be back. Hey, be nice, buddies. Share that ball. Play nice. All right. In the meantime, we're going to let you go. I hope you enjoyed it. How about you guys? You want to go for a walk? You want to go play? Come on. Let's get that ball. Let's get that ball and go play. <laughs>